Welcome everyone to another video discussion of free answer writing program by Vajiram and Ravi where we discuss three questions, two questions from GS1 Society and one question from Current Affairs. In today's discussion, we are going to see question from GS1 Society. The topics are role of women, women's organization, population, poverty and development and urbanization. We have already seen questions from these topics. Today we will be looking at questions from urbanization, their problems and their remedies. Let us see the overview of those questions. The very first question we have is with respect to how there is income inequality and lack of access to healthcare in urban areas, which is leading to disparities of health outcomes. The second question is with respect to the rise in urbanization and specifically there is a phenomena called suburbanization. Now, which is seemed like the new order of the future of cities. So in this context, we will be looking at the trends and certain challenges about the same. And the third question is current affair based question where we have recently witnessed that CEC and EC bill was passed by Rajya Sabha. So we will be looking at the key provisions and challenges with respect to the proposed bill. So let us start with the very first question. Let's read the question together. How do income inequality and lack of access to healthcare contribute to health disparities in India's urban areas? Mention the initiatives taken by the Indian government to address health issues related to urbanization. Now this question is an applied question with respect to urbanization and how it's, there are certain impacts with respect to access to health. So there are multiple topics that we have to tackle and we will be looking at firstly the structure of this question. In this question, in the introduction, you can talk about the context as in what are the kind of inequalities that urban areas are facing specifically related to the health. Then we can move to the body. In the body, the heading one, we will be talking about that how income inequality is leading to health disparities in urban areas. In the heading two, we will be talking about how lack of access to healthcare is leading to health disparities. And lastly, in the heading three, we will be talking about the initiatives taken by the Indian government to address the health issues. And in the conclusion, we'll be talking about what exactly should be the way ahead. So let us start with the introduction aspect. In the introduction, you can talk about certain context. You can definitely refer certain kind of literature such as inequality report of 2021, India's unequal healthcare stories. Now this report is by Oxfam. Oxfam has been already publishing with respect to inequality where we have seen that how 10 percentage of India, the population is having 77 percentage of the wealth. Now this kind of asymmetry is also reflected in health outcomes. And when we are talking about urban areas, we have seen there are certain trends, specifically how there are slum areas and they do not have firstly the facility with respect to the access part and also because of income inequality they face certain challenges with respect to health care services so that is something in the introduction you can write about to even understand what exactly is the nature of the issue let us see the map of delhi over here, if you see the red part are the Delhi slum buffer zones with 250 meter as the buffer zone and the blue part are the slum clinics. Over here, you can explicitly understand that slums, they do not have the kind of access with respect to healthcare services. So this is something which will help you understand what is the nature of the problem. This is something you will not you might not need to put in the answer but just for your understanding that there is disparity with respect to access in healthcare. Now let's go to the body and understand what we are going to write in the heading one. In heading one you can directly cater to the very first and the primary demand is about impact of income inequality on health disparities in urban areas. Firstly there is issue of financial barrier. We have seen that limited access to healthcare increases out of pocket expenditure. This kind of extra financial burden 
proves as hurdle for accessing health care. The second point is health behavior. As those slums do not have access to quality health products, there is certain kind of behavior and with respect to the access of accessing nutritious food, there is issues. We have seen that how those areas do not have access to healthy food as well as certain nutritious item and because of that kind of in, uh, inaccessibility, there are certain health behaviors which are against healthy behavior. Third is occupational health hazard. We have seen that how lower income individual faced hazardous working conditions and limited ac access to occupational health care. This also augments the issue of healthcare disparities and urban areas. We have seen that how people who live in the slum, they are engaged in informal nature of the work. And they do not have enough safeguards. And because of that kind of lack of safeguards, they again face issues with respect to healthcare. So this is the heading one of the body. Let's move on to heading two, where we'll be talking about impact of lack of access to healthcare on health disparities in India's urban area. Firstly, we'll talk about that how there is limited healthcare infrastructure. Just we witnessed the map of Delhi with respect to the access of health clinics in the slum. Despite rapid urbanization, we are looking at overcrowded hospitals and compromised healthcare qualities because there are not sufficient infrastructural units to cater the demand of the population. The second is informal settlements and slum. We have seen that how the infrastructure with respect to the informal settlement and slum do not have access to basic healthcare services like primary healthcare centers and that again augments the problem of healthcare disparities in urban area. The third is unequal access to healthcare. Over here we are looking at issues with respect to the finance part as well as issues with respect to accessing quality healthcare. We have seen that how wealthy and funded individuals they are able to access uh, private hospitals whereas people who cannot access that kind of hospitals or afford they do not have the kind of benefits that is possible for wealthy individuals. So these are the kind of points you can write for lack of access. Now let's talk about what are the kind of challenges that what are the kind of major health initiatives that government has taken to tackle the problem. Firstly, we have National Urban Health Mission. Over here, government had created certain kind of structures so that basic healthcare services are provided for the urban poor through primary healthcare centers. Next, we have Ayushman Bharat where we have seen there is provision for insurance for providing free healthcare for low income earners in India. Then we have Swachh Bharat mission over here. We are tackling the issue of healthcare indirectly so that we have tackled the issue of sanitation and waste management. Apart from that, we have multiple schemes like Janani Suraksha Yojana, which is specifically working for institutional delivery. Apart from that, we have Smart Cities mission where we have seen that the entire city is planned to ensure that there is no issue with respect to access and affordability of services. So these are the kind of points you can talk about with respect to the third demand, which is major healthcare initiatives. So this would be your heading three and all the points would be like this. Now this is for the body. Let's move on to the conclusion. In the conclusion, you have the opportunity to talk about how exactly there is need for multifaceted approach as in integrated and holistic. Over here we are talking about that how there is need to ensure that primary, secondary and tertiary healthcare all are integrated and are accessible to individuals in the urban areas so that they do not face any kind of disparities. Apart from that, there is also need for collaboration of government, civil societies, NGOs and private organizations to create certain kind of initiatives where there is no issue with respect to accessible and equitable distribution of resources is realized. So that is something you will write in the conclusion for question number one. 
Let us see the model answer and understand how can we inculcate the points in our answer writing practice. Firstly, in the introduction, you can talk about the inequality part and how exactly it is impacting the healthcare scenario. You can also look at the report of Oxfam specifically with respect to the healthcare disparities. Then you can talk about the impact of income inequality, give certain keywords to support your proof points. Then you talk about the lack of access, you substantiate the same with your proof points. And next you can talk about healthcare, you list down the healthcare initiatives taken by government to solve this challenge. And lastly, in the conclusion, you talk about certain measures that can be taken to ensure that there is no issue with respect to accessing the healthcare in urban areas. So these are the kind of points you can inculcate for question number one. Let's move on to question number two. Let's read the question together. Suburbanization is the new order of the future of the cities. In this context, trace the trend of suburbanization in the Indian cities and discuss the challenges related to it. If you read the question, the very first statement, suburbanization is the new order of the future of the city. Now, this is a very absolute statement. So you have to inculcate certain data points in the introduction to justify this statement as in it's a new order. So there is a certain kind of trend. So which is again going to be substantiated in the heading one where you can talk about trends of suburbanization in the Indian cities and in the body heading two, you can talk about the challenges. And in the conclusion, you can put certain way ahead points. Let's start with the introduction. In the introduction, you can talk about certain definition as in what exactly is suburbanization. Suburbanization refers to the extended build of community outside of urban areas as in outside beyond municipal boundaries where there is certain kind of benefits for the population living there. You can also talk about certain contexts as in you can talk about the World Bank's report over here we have seen that how urbanization beyond municipal boundary has been realized. You can also cite certain data points. You can talk about that how 33% of the Indian population right now is living in urban areas which will shoot up to 50 percentage by next few decades. Now because of that kind of increase in number urban areas are not planned to have that kind of sustainable uh, adjustment of that high population. So that's why suburbanization provides a viable solution. You can also understand this concept through certain graph geographical images. This is just for understanding. In 1989, this is the NCR region. You can see how exactly the region was developed. But in 2018, you can see that how this region has been developed. So this is basically the rise of suburbanization. So this is something just to understand what exactly the phenomena is happening. So you can provide valuable inputs in your answer. This is not something that you can inculcate your answer, but just for understanding. Now let us move on to the body aspect. In the heading one, as the primary demand is to talk about the trend of suburbanization, we will be listing down proof points to substantiate our understanding. Firstly, you can talk about that there is growth of suburban areas. We have seen housing complexes and township on the city outskirts leading to the expansion of suburban areas. Apart from that, you can talk about that how they are better with respect to the standard of living as well as affordable. In the urban areas, the real estate price have been constantly on rise, which is leading to the issue of affordability. Apart from that, the standard of living in urban areas specifically within the city parameters have also been challenging due to high density. Now over here we have seen that in suburban areas there is better and affordable living conditions, larger homes, more space, lower living of cost compared to the urban areas. The third point is ease of living. We have seen that how there are certain different kind of infrastructure, the peripheral infrastructure such as education etc have been growing in the suburban areas and they are providing better quality. There's also lower crime rate and stronger sense of community in those regions. Fourth, we have seen that how there are certain advancement with respect to technological application for transportation and communication, which is now helping people to live far from the urban center while staying connected. So we can understand that how the technology 
is modifying the way we are working and way we are living and suburban areas they also provide other benefits and thus we are able to see the best of both so these are the kind of trends of suburbanization in the indian cities now let us talk about certain challenges in the heading 2 of the body over here you can list down certain proof points and substantiate the same with examples firstly there is issue with respect to transportation now those suburban areas are quite distant from the urban areas and there are certain connectivity issues we have also seen there are certain issues with respect to environmental concern there is conversation of agriculture land into housing complex that directly impacts the food security also we have seen that it is leading to loss of biodiversity because the region previously was not occupied by the human population as well as was not developed as in from the infrastructural point of view this also leads to different kind of pollution issues such as air water noise so those are the environmental concerns then third is social challenges over here we have seen that how suburban areas they do not have the kind of density as in the kind of solidarity with respect to the urban and the rural population comparatively and we have seen that there have been uh, exclusionary housing developments that leads to lack of diversity and cultural amenities fourth is with respect to infrastructural challenges now we have seen that despite having growth of peripheral infrastructure such as education the suburban areas do not have the kind of infrastructure development compared to the urban areas so that again becomes a challenge for the development of suburban regions so these are the kind of challenges you can talk about in the body in heading 2 moving on in the conclusion you can talk about certain way ahead to ensure those challenges are bridged firstly you can talk about that there is need to ensure proper land use to ensure that whatever uh, expansion is happening in the suburban areas is not unsustainable you can also talk about certain edge disease where there are certain explicit goals with respect to sustainable cities and communities over here suburban region must also adhere to that kind of targets and goals the third point over here we can talk about it how when we are talking about issues with respect to environment and connectivity and rise in population so there is proper need for policy which will ensure holistic development of the region and taking care of all the issues that we have seen so these are the kind of way ahead points you can inculcate for your answer in the conclusion let us see the model answer and understand how can we inculcate the same in our answer writing practice in the introduction you can talk about the definition you can also talk about certain trends as in through data points in the body in the heading one you can talk about the trends as it is the direct demand you can list down different proof points along with the substantiation in the challenges which is the heading two you can list down the challenges along with the proof points and in the conclusion you can talk about what exactly is the need as in way ahead so that is all for question number two let us move to question number three now question number three is a current affair based question we have recently seen that how Rajya Sabha passes bill to appoint CEC and EC the bill now there is certain criticism with respect to the bill so in this question we will be talking about the key provisions and the challenges let's read the question the independence of the ECI is essential for ensuring free and fair election that is paramount for the vibrant democracy in light of the recent CEC and other EC bill 2023 mention the key provisions and challenges inherent in the proposed bill if you read the question you will understand there is first statement with respect to the independence of ECI election commission of India to, to ensure free and fair elections for vibrant democracy now this is something you can inculcate in the introduction itself you can also talk about it how the recent bill have certain kind of challenges to realize the independence of ECI then in the heading one you can talk about the key provisions of the bill and in the heading two you can talk about 
the challenges with respect to the proposed bill and in the conclusion you can talk about what are the kind of measures that can be taken to ensure there is independence of ECI thus free and fair election thus realization of vibrant democracy. So let's start with the introduction. In the introduction you can talk about the current affair as in Rajya Sabha recently passed the bill and there are certain challenges with respect to the bill. In the heading 2, in the heading 1, you can talk about what are the key provisions of the bill. You can list down the provisions of the bill which are proposed and talk about what exactly they have effect. Firstly, you can talk about the appointment process. Over here, we have seen that the president will appoint CEC and EC based on selection committee. Over here, we have understood that the selection committee comprises of the people who are part of the government as well as the opposition. So it is a definitely a vibrant selection committee. However, there are certain things that we have to take, take care which we will see in the challenges. Over here, we have seen that recommendation validity is even there despite there are certain vacancy in the selection committee. The search committee proposes the names of the for the panel and that has to be passed by the president. Then we have certain provisions with respect to salary and condition. Previously the CEC and EEC were on par with the judges of Supreme Court but now they have been on par with the cabinet secretary's equivalent salary. Then with respect to the term and reappointment we have seen that the bill talks about it maximum six years until 65 no reappointment also with respect to the removal process it for the CEC the removal process is on par with the constitution but for the EC it is not modified as in the CEC holds the kind of authority over here and with respect to the safeguard there are certain kind of immunities from legal proceeding during the tenure so these are the kind of provisions that are in the bill. Let us talk about what are the kind of challenges these provisions have. Firstly, with respect to the transparency and selection process, the issue is that the recommendation are valid even during vacancy. Now, if the leader of opposition is not there, that can create certain dominance of the ruling party undermining the diversity. Second is composition concern. We have seen that how there is involvement of Cabinet Minister instead of CJI in the selection panel that can prove as a threat to the diversity. Third is executive control as we have seen that now the salaries are linked with the cabinet secretary's salary and thus they are not fixed by the parliament as previously it was because previously they were on par with the judges of Supreme Court. So this risks financial independence of the election commission of India. Next is the eligibility criteria with respect to the members of CC. Now as it has been limited to equivalent of secretary of the government, it can definitely prove threat to certain potential qualified candidates limiting the diversity of the pool. And lastly absence of parity as there are different process for removal of CEC and EEC, it represents certain kind of lack of fairness and parity in the removal system. So these are the kind of challenges that you can talk about with respect to the bill. In the way ahead, you can talk about again reiterating that how there is need for autonomy and independence of Election Commission of India. Thus, going ahead, the selection committee must have certain kind of diversity and also must have certain kind of way through which consensus can be reached. without threatening the diversity and also we can talk about that how that EC the removal process must be on par with CEC. So these are the kind of points that you can inculcate in the way ahead. Let us see the model answer and understand how can we structure an answer, answer in answer writing practice. Firstly you can talk about in the introduction the current affairs. You can also list down certain judgments that how exactly the proposed bill is in sync with certain uh, judgments. You can also talk about certain committees such as Dinesh Goswami Committee and Law Commission which suggested certain kind of measures such as selection committee where Prime Minister, CJI and leader of opposition are the members. You can list down the key provisions. You can list down what exactly those provisions are and explain in brief. Then you can talk about the challenges with respect to those provisions 
and thus in the conclusion you can talk about what exactly should we go ahead with to ensure the independence of ECEI is realized. So this is all for question number three. You are writing for answer writing program by Vajiram and Ravi. In this month, we are doing GS1. We are writing questions and answers for five days a week, Monday to Friday. You can write two questions on static and there's one question on current affairs. You can attempt those questions at vajiramis.com. You can see the model answers and video discussion over here at YouTube channel. So keep writing and thank you so much.